Liverpool's Mo Salah has said again that he wants to stay at the club, but that the decision is in the hands of the management and they have to solve the issue. His deal runs out in the summer of 2023. Everton and West Ham are interested in Edin Hazard and Real Madrid are apparently ready to accept £21 million for the Belgian. Spanish international Fabian Ruiz is a target for Liverpool. Ajax manager Eric Ten Hag has been linked with taking over at Manchester United and says that he is ready for the challenge of managing a foreign club. Southampton have got an injury crisis on their hands and they're considering making a move for 40-year-old Willy Caballero. The Argentina goalkeeper is a free agent after leaving Chelsea at the end of last season. Newcastle United co-owner Merdad Godusi has denied the club offered Michael Emanalo the job of director of football after reports that he turned them down. L'Equipe are reporting that Lionel Messi's entourage have doubts about Mauricio Pochettino's tactical abilities, especially his game plan. Jude Bellingham's being sued for defamation of character by the referee that he said had been caught match fixing. It's been reported in the Athletic that the San Francisco 49ers have a deal in place to buy Leeds United for a price in excess of £400 million. Southampton's Norwegian winger Mohamed El Yunusi has been linked with a move to Arsenal and Leicester City, but he says that his future is with Southampton and that his family are settled in the South Coast. And Barcelona are closer to relegation than they are to first place Real Madrid in La Liga this season. This is for the ones who What's going on people, welcome back to another video. My name is Hugh Wizzy and you're watching Paper Talk. We are back again bright and early on a Monday morning to go through the latest breaking news for dead ass and see exactly what's making the headlines in these, the most fraudulent publications available to man. We buy them so that you don't have to. Love to your mothers, hope you're all doing well and looking after each other in these turbulent times. We're all we've got people. For now, though, we have got four fraudulent publications to be going through, including The Guardian, The Daily Star, The Daily Mirror, and The Times. It's daily, like Thompson. It's daily, like Paper Talk. Let's get down to business. Let's start on the back of the mirror who review Manchester United's 1-0 win against Patrick Vieira's Crystal Palace. Red Fred Wine and Ralph Rangnick vowing to celebrate with a glass of red after making a winning start as Manchester United manager. And a fantastic goal from the Brazilian midfielder who has been improving drastically over recent weeks. Let's be honest, no one really would have expected him to be the goal scorer of the winner. And let alone with his weaker foot and from outside the box. Sensational scenes for Fred, who is winning the hearts of a few Manchester United fans, I would say. Up here we've got Birmingham City, who have been leading the tributes to six-year-old Arthur Lubinjo Hughes, who died as a result of the brain injury suffered at the hands of his own parents. His mum slamming his head into a hard surface several times last year, and the tributes have been raining in up and down the country it's very touching and hopefully raises awareness about the abuse that some kids are having to endure at the people they should be trusting or able to trust the most very sad up here we've got tough talk seals it for villa aston villa's 2-1 win over leicester city is being credited in large part down to steven gerrard's half-time team talk which you can imagine is not softcore Three wins out of four in the Premier League so far for Gerrard. A fantastic start for him at Aston Villa. On the back of the Daily Star, we have got Stevie Glee as Conser seals it. A brace from Conser, who is certainly in with a shout of some international football surely soon. Fantastic uh, run of form for the kid. Fred Red Wine. Isn't that the same as the mirror headline? Wait. Red Fred Wine. I mean, laziness beyond belief. But down here, Ralph off to a great start. A little bit of bile just came up in my mouth. Uh, Ralph Ragnick vowing to toast a glass of vino at Old Trafford for the first time in a decade, because he had already done that, sharing a glass of wine with Sir Alex Ferguson after his Schalke side got battered by United in the Champions League then. However, interim boss Ragnick admitting that this was the perfect start and he was going to enjoy this one. Over here we've got bees are stung by missiles. Leeds 2, Brentford 2, fantastic game, but uh, marred by a little bit of controversy or just an unfortunate moment when fans appeared to throw a plastic bottle or two at Sergi Canos and Brian Mbwemo, who were both celebrating Brentford's goal. Um, Sergi Canos went down, holding his neck, Bremo sort of rubbing his head. Uh, uncomfortable, and I'm sure that there are going to be repercussions. 
Gang, whilst I've got you, please do smash the hell out of the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, it's massively appreciated, as is every single one of those full stops from the algorithm dons. I see you, I feel you, I know you, my actual sons. Please do follow me on all the appropriate social medias as well. We're on the Twitter sphere, we're on the Instagram on a daily basis, baby, please. And of course, you've got other options in the links in the description box below, including Discord, TikTok, and whatever else floats your boat. Sweet. And down here, at last, a Rafa win. Uh, Everton do, of course, play Arsenal tonight, so we could be talking about another Everton win later on, hopefully not. But Rafa Benitez has actually won his power battle with the Dutch director of football, Marcel Brands, who's been at the club for a few years now and spent over £300 million on transfers in that time with mixed results, let's say. Brands is left by mutual consent after agreeing a payoff with Farhad Moshiri, and the pressure really will now be on Rafa. On the front of the Guardian, and this is a big deal to me at least, uh, the women's game getting some real good promo after the FA Cup final. Chelsea with a 3-0 convincing win and Sam Kerr's brace, one of which was one of the most incredible goals you're going to see in the ladies game for a while, I would imagine. The Australian striker is a handful, to say the least, and Chelsea fully deserving of the win on the day with Emma Hayes producing yet another tactical masterclass. She is actually my favourite pundit on TV, bar none. So, um, yeah, good on you. On the back of the times, we've got uh, cricket, cricket, and Lewis Hamilton slams crazy rival after chaotic win. This is incredibly close. Oh, they are genuinely neck and neck. I watched the latter stages of the race, brilliantly exciting stuff, and slightly fraudulent from this guy, Max. I'm not a massive F1 nerd or anything, but I could tell blatantly that he was trying to fuck my boy up. Yeah? In the Daily Mirror pull-up, we've got a preview of the Everton against Arsenal game. Kick-off at Goodison Park, 8 o'clock tonight. Arteta saying, I cannot afford to have any sympathy for Rafa. He can handle it. Arteta and Everton, of course, do go way back. But Arsenal go to Goodison needing a win to get back on track for their push for a top-four place, having lost out to Manchester United on Thursday and seeing Ralph Rangnick pick up three points against Palace at the weekend. That has dented Arsenal's Champions League hopes massively. Um, let me know your thoughts. Where do you actually think Arsenal are going to finish? Will they win tonight? Big game. Thomas Partey has been the subject of questioning and Arteta has been saying that he needs him to start kicking on. He's had a whole bunch of injuries which have stopped him from really being the player that we saw at Atleti so far. Hopefully that changes tonight. Shaken and spurred, Conte demanded victory and Mora made sure there were no slip-ups against shot shy Canaries. Spurs 3, Norwich City 0. A slightly deceptive scoreline if you watch the game. Tottenham really are obviously very good at the front, packed with talented players, but they're a bit of a mess at the back. and. If it wasn't for, I guess, the lack of composure from Puki or even Adam Ida, I reckon Norwich may well have got something from this. They had a lot of the ball, I think 60% possession. However, Spurs, as you can see, are flying up the table under Conte, unbeaten in the Premier League so far. But he will want to go shopping in the January transfer window. I can't believe that he is going to be happy with what he saw. And you would think that if they are going to challenge for top four, they're going to need some more defenders. Quick European wrap-up. Jose Mourinho's Roma losing 3-0 to Inter Milan means that is his equal uh, biggest home defeat in his managerial career. Of course, that 3-0 defeat to Spurs as Manchester United manager in 2018 level with that. And AC Milan moved to the top of Serie A with a 2-0 victory over Salernitana. Uh, Leipzig boss Jesse March has been sacked ahead of tomorrow's Champions League clash with Manchester City. The rain may have been bucketing down at St James's Park, but Newcastle United players and Eddie Howe did a lap of honour at St James's Park as the fans roared in appreciation as at the 15th attempt, Newcastle won their first Premier League match of the season with a winner from Callum Wilson. That's about it this time. If you've enjoyed the video, please do smash the hell out of the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Turn those bell notifications on as well so you never miss an upload from your fraud father and I will catch you on the flip side. For now though, I've been Hugh Wizzy and this has been a lot of fun. Peace.